June 18th meeting of the Bristol Planning Commission. And tonight we're going to, well, first of all, we do not have any minutes to approve at this time. Um, and we, um, we're going to be talking to Andrew LaRoe. Um, he's going to be talking to us. Hopefully about, we'll talk back. Yeah, we'll talk back. Some of you will talk back. And uh, we're going to discuss the uh, forest fragmentation and um, habitat connectivity piece of the Bristol plan. And But first I'd like to welcome our newest Planning Commission member. We're just growing. We can't grow anymore. But I'd like to welcome Lloyd Dyke. And uh, do you know everybody here? Bill Brown. Bill Brown. Bill Brown. Yeah. Katie. Mark Gibson. Mark Gibson. Mark Gibson. This is Andrew 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 from Middlebury. Yeah. From Addison County Regional yeah. Plan. And that. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Good. Good. So, um, unless there's any other administrative issues that everybody needs to discuss or wants to bring up, I think that if there are any, speak up. If not, we'll just go right into this piece. Yeah, so maybe administratively we can do kind of a quick recap and technical details. So I think I sent an email out and we'll have to get your email. Um, so our general approach is to set up a Google document. We'll do kind of a combination of printed things for folks that like paper, um, but we have it available through uh, Google Documents. Um, and it basically just started with the existing town plan, which I saw a couple of people have copies of, looks like this, um, and put it up in a Word format without all the extra formatting so folks can look at it and make comments on it. And I know Bill Brown has already started making some comments and I've been trying to catch up with some of the population figures and things. Fortunately, they haven't changed a whole lot. So there's not too much to change, but um, we were basically gonna take it a piece at a time and the sort of major piece on our plate is this forest fragmentation, forest uh, blocks and corridors piece. So that's what I've handed out papers for. Um, and I actually came last Thursday and talked briefly with the Conservation Commission who pointed me towards uh, something that's actually an appendix of the existing town plan. Um, there's a, I think it's Appendix X, um, which is on the town website. I didn't print you a copy, but I can if you'd like. Um, it's pretty similar to what's already in the plan. This was written in 2007, so I think there were just pieces taken. Um, it's things like topography and mineral resources and water, and a lot of it is word for word in the existing town plan. Um, but it's also in there as an appendix. Um, so if folks want to look at that, you're welcome to. There's not a whole lot. I thought, oh, this is great. We already have a bunch of things written about forests, and there's like a paragraph in there, um, most of which is already in the town plan. So we are, to some extent, sort of creating this section from scratch. Uh, the first thing that I handed most of you, except Mark, you don't get one, um, you can, you can. <laughs> is about this today. Bristol Town Plan Updates and Act 171, which is sort of our guiding... Uh, can I, actually, can I just say one thing? Yeah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt. <clears throat> I don't know how much I, I didn't... Oh, yeah. Are you caught up with... Do you know what we're talking about, basically? <laughs> Not to put you on the spot. But there's, we're ba we just started working with Andrew, who works for Addison County Regional Planning, um, to uh, update pieces of the town plan that are required to be included. Um, our town plan is expired, uh, just due to, you know, some, anyways, it needs to be updated. And because it's being updated now, um, there's certain sections that are re required to be in in it, as all towns are required to have these sections. Which weren't required. Excuse me. Which weren't needed before. Right. They're no. new. They're new. Yeah. Um, and uh, you know, and I apologize for not giving you that background. I should I should have uh, met with you beforehand. But um, Andrew came last meeting, and we we reviewed all of this. 
So, I mean, I'm happy to meet with you uh, later as well if you need any, um, you know, if you want to get any more information. But we're starting now pretty much at the beginning looking at, and, and you're going to pretty much introduce this section and sort of the, the reason and the, the purpose behind it. So we're all kind of in the same place right now, but that's what we're working on. We're yeah. just really starting on that. So I should say that it has been... I mean, it's been updated fairly frequently over the last five years, just right. not officially where it uh, told the new section. So a lot of the plan is pretty current because um, I think the zoning was updated right. a couple the, years ago. And well, it was 2012 <coughs> and then it was updated and approved by the select board in 2017 for the new maps that related to the new zoning. Is that correct, Chris? 2017? Yep. But we didn't get it a regional approval for some reason. It just kind of slipped. Yeah. But it, it, we would have had to add these sections anyways in the next couple of years, so we're doing it now. Um, and this is the first section that we're working on. And this was approved. This was um, passed into the legislature. When? When was it? The Act 171, which is this forest regulation. 17. It started in 2018. Is when the requirements kicked in. So I think okay. it was just before then. Okay, um, so that's what we're working on now. Yeah, so there is a whole bunch of documentation about forest fragmentation things. If anybody would like to see it, I can give you either printed or digital versions. Uh, so I tried to summarize it just so it wasn't too overwhelming. Um, so there's basically the new state land use planning goal is to manage Vermont's forest land, so it's to maintain and improve forest blocks and habitat connectors. And I'll show you a quick thing in a second to sort of explain what those are and sort of what their state's definitions of those are um, and so where it hits the road so there's requirements for basically the state and for the regional plan but then for us the municipal plans anything adopted after last year have to include a map that identifies forest blocks and habitat connectors which we'll talk about a land use plan which indicates areas that require special consideration for aquifer production wetland production maintenance of forest blocks wildlife habitat and habitat connectors so that's now additions to the existing land use plan section. And then an indication of areas that are important as forest blocks and habitat connectors and plans for land development in those areas to minimize forest fragmentation and promote the health, viability, and ecological function of forests. And then uh, some additional specific policies that the plan can include. So that's quite a lot. Um, at the moment, there is a section of the town plan that's a scenic, cultural, historic, and natural resources section. So our proposal is basically to split out the natural resource section since it's over half of it anyway, uh, and add uh, a piece about forests and wildlife connectors uh, to that. So I've actually gone ahead and done that on the Google document. Um, and since each section has goals, policies, and tasks, splitting those, so the natural resource ones go with the natural resource section, the other ones stay with the existing section. Is that okay with everyone so far? And that would be this sheet here? For the, so that one, I will, yes. So I will get to that one. The, um, but this is what you've done in, in the work? Yes. So in the, in the Google Doc, uh, these are basically the ones that are natural resource related um, that I've pulled out uh, okay. on one side. So the, the side that starts with current Bristol natural resource section. And then on the back are some other ones that we'll talk about examples of which ones we could potentially add that are more forest specific. So uh, this is actually your homework assignment. So you're, it's good to get this in people's heads to be thinking about. Um, and, and all of this right now is all draft. I mean, this is, in, yeah. this is all stuff yeah. to be yeah, discussed. I, I was just trying to yeah. correlate what the paper is. Yeah. yeah. So your other, your other two maps um, I will talk about in one second. I'm going to play you, so the uh, NR has been doing a number of webinars and things that sort of go into great detail about how they uh, map these different forest blocks. They've basically uh, given sort of their idea based on satellite imagery and some other things of where they think these areas are. Uh, and we, are, we have those and have those on the maps, but we have the ability to tweak them. Um, and I'll just show you a quick clip. Maybe if I pull this around, Mark, you can see it. Um, and because they do a better job of explaining it than I do, and 
have some visuals to go along with it. And we'll see if I can do this upside down. Can everybody see that, or should I tip it? Ah, uh, right. Yeah. Is that better? It takes the glitter off. Okay. the whole webinar, I can send you the link. Um, so it's online, you can send you it. You can find it online yeah. too. So this is uh, kind of a rough kitty. Thank you for printing this. Um, I've got just two of them, so you may have to share. Um, idea of sort of what she was looking at. And so the context that we're talking about is on this first map, town of Bristol, habitat priorities. Uh, and there are definitions on the back. Um, I know that makes it a little difficult to see, but they'll stay together that way. Uh, so a forest block is a contiguous area of forest in any stage of succession and not currently developed for non-forest use. It can include recreational trails, wetlands, or other natural features that do not themselves possess tree cover and uses exempt from regulation under subsection blah blah blah. So it's basically areas that they've identified um, using, I think, satellite imagery uh, <coughs> that are of a certain size and are not fragmented by roads. So basically big contiguous chunks of forest. So those are the green areas. They've also identified what they call uh, wildlife corridors or habitat connectors, which are in orange. Uh, so those are some of these places up in the northeast part of Bristol and some of the scattered areas sort of along the eastern edge there. <coughs> So the habitat connectors are supposed to link patches of wildlife habitat within a landscape. They're talking mostly about forested habitat, allowing movement, migration, and dispersal of animals and plants and the functioning of ecological processes. May also include recreational trails and uses exempt from regulation, and you, they can be called wildlife corridors or habitat connectors. So those are our basic sort of areas that we're talking about. Um, and then to give you a sense of what we our sort of task is. So uh, we have to basically update the land use chapter of the Bristol Town Plan to incorporate some of this information and then uh, identify some of these areas, decide whether we want to describe them, some of their values, and then uh, how we want to incorporate some of the habitat connectors and whether we want to say anything special about them, basically to say, we should take more care thinking about development in some of these areas. Uh, so, what, what is the implication of being a connector? For? So, my reading is basically that these are the, the green areas are sort of your core forest habitat for things like deer, uh, bobcat, bear, uh, and that basically those are areas that they want to keep less developed, or but it's really up to the town uh, to say what they want to do. The state just wants some thought to go into those areas and recognition. Uh, and then I think for the wildlife corridors, all, again, thinking about, you know, we don't necessarily want to 
control everything, but be thinking about if there are species that might be moving from habitat block to habitat block, or if there are ways to make that easier for them or protect more of them, and whether they're ones that may be more important than others. Or not so. divide it. So most, it seems like most of the habitat, or the forest blocks are probably divided by roads. Which, and, and so, and then obviously development happens along roads, most likely. So there are, I think it's, as Andrew said, to acknowledge that you, you have these big areas and that we want to, to keep, you know, have there be an ability for wildlife to continue to connect from big block to big block. But without, you know, putting, most of these big block areas are already in conservation areas, it seems, if you look at our map. But, you know, on the edges, it's not completely, you know, it's, it's there's a lot of gray area there. So it's, I don't know, I've been trying to figure this out as well. <laughs> so, um, so uh, yeah, a yeah, lot of I, I didn't mean to it's jump in, but it's just no, no. It's trying to, you know, I think we're all trying you to figure this out. <laughs> certainly more familiar with Bristol than I am. Just a curious yeah. question here is, relative to other towns that you're familiar with, mm -hmm. we have a pretty big area here, it looks to me. Yeah. Okay, so is that more or less than a lot of towns you see? Um, I mean, Bristol is pretty unique because it's right on, it's sort of on that edge of the front of the Green Mountains. So you get towns further up, uh, Ripton and uh, Lincoln, I was trying to combine those in my head, uh, that are almost all national forests and they're basically surrounded by national forests except for the thin strip so of town. something more than what we have. No? Yeah, yeah. Um, but there's, you know, there's not a whole lot they can do because it's all controlled by the federal government that has their own management plans. And then, you know, basically east of here, uh, sort of as you get towards Lake Champlain, there's a lot less for us. It's mostly uh, For example, Bridport is a town yeah. that, that I've been working with lately, and I mean, they don't have very much forest at all. The oh, farm farm yeah. yeah, but their connectors would be the riparian along the streams. There's a lot of waterway. Okay. So it's, it's to, I think this process it seems to me that it's to acknowledge that and to try to um, preserve, not in a way, in not you know, not to eliminate development, but to preserve ways for uh, wildlife to continue to move. Yeah. Well, we talked about this, I don't know, months ago, this corridor right here mm -hmm. um, that we wanted to protect. Um, right. Right, when we were looking at, that was actually years ago, I think. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Rockydale area, and we, we actually had someone who lives there come and talk about it because he was concerned. Yeah, it was a couple right. of years ago. Yeah. He, I don't remember his name, do you? It was uh, Randy Durant. Okay, because he was concerned about the wildlife traveling, crossing uh, 116 there, and if that area was too densely um, zoned that that would prohibit that, so we uh, we didn't zone it as dense. We kept it larger lots. And there are like if you drive through Warren, I noticed the other day they have some nice wildlife crossing signs. Sort of, I think it's on. It's not 100. The road that comes over through Warren um, has 17. A wildlife corridor, sort of marked on the roads to ask people to slow down and be mindful. Um, obviously, this is primarily aimed at forest dwelling species and the migration is for more for mobile ones. If you have things like salamanders or things are going to be moving completely differently than bears and birds and other things. So some of this is an exercise just in sort of saying these are these are areas that show up as potential you know leapfrogging sites. We I live on a hill in Middlebury and we're starting to get bears that are coming from the Green Mountains and they're obviously sort of working from forest patch to forest patch as they come over. We've been keeping an eye on front porch for them as people complain about them. Um, so there is something to be said for these kind of islands of habitat. Um, and especially if we do see climate change and species are being pushed either north or up um, to have uh, ways for them to travel. The, the flip side of that is you also get invasive species and um, so ways to sort of think about whether they're undesirable species that you don't want coming in. Um, at the same time, if you're providing corridors from them, could be a little dicey and might require some effort. Uh, but part of this is basically 
laying out some priorities, that's something then that like the Conservation Commission could say, oh, we have a project that we'd like to work on. They can point to the town plan and leverage that. So um, our sort of first step is to lay out, talk about some of these different areas, which many of you are probably familiar with, um, and sort of pick out uh, a few to write up descriptions within the town plan. Uh, I've pulled out some of the existing information on a couple of them uh, on the, the back side of this habitat priorities map, uh, the important forest blocks. So the Bristol Cliffs Wilderness is a big chunk of the southern piece of green, and then Hawkback Mountain. Uh, there are other, is it Deer Leap is the other, uh, the exposed parts. Uh, the Watershed Center up in the northwestern corner uh, is a fairly sizable chunk. Um, and then there's actually uh, scattered private land, another sort of slightly different management area of the Green Mountain National Forest to the south. Uh, so those are sort of the main chunks. So is, yep. there, is there an overlay then of how we could, could so we can see what you know, uh, Green Mountain National Forest is and, and what the watershed is and, and any <coughs> other conserved land or that, that sort of thing? I have. And how does it layer onto <laughs> these areas? Glad you asked. Um, <laughs> I only have one copy of this, uh, so I might have to hold it up, but I can pass it to you and I can put it online. So the, this blue section, uh, so everything that's green behind are those same forest blocks, and then the orange is the habitat corridor connector areas. The sort of cross-hatching uh, is different levels or modes of conservation. So this area in blue is the Green Mountain National Forest wilderness area. Um, some of these chunks are also Green Mountain National Forest, but it's in, I think, diverse use and they have some escarpment pieces that they manage more uh, for other reasons. So um, the crosshatch yellow is all in use value, uh, the tax program for forest land. So you can see that most of this area, uh, is, a big chunk of it is A. Johnson. Uh, there's some, the red pieces are the Nature Conservancy. So you get kind of a mix of some of those uses. So the use use program is indefinite or is it just it goes through the land indefinitely or is there a limit of time? Uh, I don't, you may be able to speak more to that than I can. Um, it's, a, it's basically a tax program that runs with the land. Current use? Current use. Current yeah. use, yeah. Is it the land on the land? Sure. Yeah. Uh, it runs with the land. Mm -hmm. Thank you. No. All right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's the idea that so somebody could release the lien at some point. It's possible you'd have to pay a penalty. Mm -hmm. And there's really, <coughs> historically, looking at the actual evidence, <coughs> been very little, very little land removed from land or incentive, per perhaps, if you're, like, it's on the mountain. Right. <laughs> very little incentive to reduce it. And most of it is working forest and, and the people um, and the use value program helps keep it that way. Wait, so what's the meaning of being use? I mean, it's called it's a use value, <coughs> excuse me, use value appraisal. Uh -huh. And it um, recognizes that forest land uh, puts very little burden on the town for town services. Forest land and farmland are both in the program and therefore taxes the land at its use, its value in use, yeah. as opposed to its development value. Yeah. And that so makes it more likely that it will continue to be And that's, that's a choice that the property owner makes. That's right. To go into that program, so it's a tax abatement program. Correct? It is. So yeah. Then once they're in it, they have to basically pay to get out of it. You can't, they can't. That's Because I... I read about it in terms of s renewable energy to you can't then use it for putting a solar field up and yeah. generating income so that and map so you held up is there like a link to that or how do uh, you chris is making copies right now so that's my 
that's my link. But I can I can Andrew, also send it out. <laughs> Andrew um, showed me that map today at work, and I said that's too complicated. <laughs> Oh, it's, it's good math. No, it's a great map, but it's, I thought. I mean, it's a ton of information. That's the problem. It's a lot of information. Yeah. Who's there? So it's, I like it. Yeah. But we I can try. Sorry. It was too complicated for me. I guess. <laughs> I said start with all the simple paper. one, and then we moved yeah. to the other one. There's some of it. It's not the real line. Line. What do I know? <laughs> so yeah, I'll I'll send out that map. Um, I guess are there are there sections are that people either think I should be included or lumped together, or does anybody want to volunteer to write up a description of one of those quote unquote habitat blocks? Uh, well, I guess the other question I had to have is we're focused on with this particular map right here. Mm -hmm. We're focused on Bristol. Yes. Um, but Surratt, some of this stuff doesn't stop at the border of Bristol. It goes into surrounding towns. Right. So it, to me, it seems pretty important to see that a lot of this green stuff goes over into, I guess that would be Lincoln, and then it goes north into Moncton and Starksboro. And also Ripton. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ripton. There's. We built Ripton. Yeah. Okay. And but then on the, e on the west side, where you've got the brown habitat blocks, it gets really spotty and it continues to be spotty over into New Haven. So what is the, so we, I guess I'm trying to figure out what the benefit is past the border for those areas. Right, so this is, this is another version for one of the many things the state has put together and they've basically lumped it all into the dark green um, as their highest priority areas. So you can really see how it starts to break up into those sort of islands of forests as you go further west. So basically things that might be moving east-west or also going more south. So like I said, I am down in Middlebury and we know that stuff is coming down uh, New Haven River, Muddy Branch into Middlebury. It's um, basically using some of those forest patches. So because this town plan only applies to Bristol, I basically just pulled out the Bristol part. I was trying to leave some of it shaded um, so you can see some of those habitat connectors. Uh, but yeah, basically you're right. It's it's very much connected, uh, especially with the escarpment. You're getting a lot of north-south movement and not as much sort of down the cliffs. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's something that probably we could talk about whether you know, some of these areas may or may not be as connected just because of topography. Thank you, Chris. <coughs> so I don't know if, if that helps at all or if that got so to So you kind of an idea, I mean, when you say right up. Yeah. Uh, so basically a different version of what you have on the back of this already? Yeah, or whether there's additional information or folks I should talk to or like, yeah, so the, can you point out that I've got a little bit already on the... If you see here, sort of, it's just kind of step, it's part of the process of identifying these areas and then describing them. Right. There's so much described in the natural okay. resource section. Right. Of the there's, land in that in that appendix. There's but a little bit. Most of the existing natural resource section is focused on water, wetland kinds of resources. Um, but if there are things like rare species or community types that we're interested in and want to see persisting, um, so some of what I pulled out already uh, about Bristol Cliffs was in the conservation plan. Uh, I guess the paragraph about. Uh, the Hogback Mountain, um, some of the things that uh, talk about some of the specific types of temperate calcareous cliffs. Um, so basically building on that. So if there's other, and maybe uh, you, you guys don't know necessarily some of the specifics of those areas, but if you have folks that we should talk to in terms of writing that up, or if there are other places uh, we should be thinking about as sort of forested areas that aren't on that list. Um, I 
And then I think for me, bringing in some of those ownership pieces to acknowledge that, you know, while this area is more public ownership, this area is under private ownership, and we should be encouraging folks to stay within uh, the use value appraisal current use program uh, and, you know, trying to work with landowners to stay within that uh, and perhaps indicate to the state that it's importance for, you know, half the forest in Bristol that are in private ownership. So uh, things like that to acknowledge that, you know, it's not just public ownership that we're talking about. Stuff that's already in the Green Mountain National Forest is relatively safe, depending on your view of how the federal government is <laughs> doing these days. Um, but I think most of the area that's in the Bristol Close Wilderness uh, is being managed in a fairly, I would say, passive way. Um, and some of their other properties down south are uh, being managed for more diverse age classes and recreation and things. Um, so, and some of you that may live here and know more about it can correct me. Uh, so, uh, probably an acknowledgement that there are at least two major businesses in town that rely pretty heavily on forests um, would be a good thing to include. Um, I don't know if any folks have other suggestions for pieces that they'd like to see in it, special places that you guys think are important. Um, there is, on the last page I gave you, a list of uh, example uh, goals, policies, and recommendations. And I don't expect you to look through it right now, but um, we can pull some or all of these to add to the existing ones that are on the opposite sheet. Um, so if there are ones that jump out at you as either exceptionally good or exceptionally problematic uh, for next time, maybe if you can mark those and bring that with you or email me your suggestions. So I think Kevin asked for an overlay. That would be really helpful for me. I mean, mm -hmm. exactly Bristol Cliffs, well, I know where it is, but where, you know, what's considered Bristol Cliffs, you know, the right. same for Hogback and so on and so forth. So if we had an overlay, I mean, I'm looking at the area where I live, up, you know, in this area. Right. Um, I don't know how many acres this would encompass, mm -hmm. but I know that it's uh, almost all, well, I think it's all privately owned. But, so, um, so when you say overlay, what would you like overlaid? Would you like property lines would you like well for example i would labels. like to know exactly what the lines are for the green mountain national forest and the bristol cliffs mm -hmm. what the perimeter is okay. okay the same for hardback i think and that any other identifiable that have been identified by the conservation commission or whoever mm -hmm. okay so we would know exactly. yeah, are, there, are, there, are there exact boundaries for those areas for the ownership things, yes. When you get into community yeah. types, like forest types and things, it's a little more, you know. Uh, Even diagrammatically, so you can see, you know, because I'm assuming, I'm assuming Bristol Cliffs Wilderness Area is this whole green block below where the New Haven it's, is. If you look at that other map, it's that blue cross-hatched, uh, the contiguous part is that Bristol old, Cliffs Wilderness. That whole cross-hatch area? No. Uh, there's a couple pieces right on the edge. Right. Okay. Oh, this is Bristol Cliffs down here? Yeah. Below the river. So what is this up this is here? Hogback Farm. Oh, that's fine. Okay. So okay. when... I'll, I'll hand this down. Uh, so the Green Mountain National Forest has its own giant management plan where they've divvied up everything. Um, and I can give you Bristol's basically up here. Uh, we can... Maybe I'll get somebody to run it off. Um, but I can send a link for that. Um, but basically, the the what's here as a light greenish chunk is the Bristol Cliffs Wilderness, meaning it's more passive approach uh, as a wilderness area. The very light green is an escarpment area, so it's right along that ridge and is really just managed for natural communities and nothing else. And then these dark green and red areas are the diverse use, so it's a little more heavily managed, and the red, I think, is mostly around beaver meadows, and it's an ecological community, so it's also pretty hands-off. So this, these definitions are uh, created by the National Forest? Yeah, Green so this is all part of their management plan that they okay. update every five or ten years or okay. whenever they get around to it, depending on their funding. 
So, but it's pretty set. It would make sense maybe to have those descriptions. Yeah, we could include those as as parts as if that's that they're existing. Supply. Yeah. Yeah, because even though that sort of contiguous chunk south of the the river and uh, so the road of the Lincoln. So right, and the river. Yeah. Yeah. Even though Lincoln it looks like sort of one big contiguous chunk, it's got kind of I would say three sort of ownership categories, the big wilderness area, the use value private area, and then back into Green Mountain National Forest, but different management. So it may be worth writing those as three kind of separate sections. Um, do, do you need to, well, again, diagrammatically, do the high level. Yeah. You know, make this block right here, which includes the what are, you, what are you looking at? The, he's looking at the land use. Yeah. So to me, you've got a block there, you've got a block there, and you've got a block there. So mm -hmm. and Which is the town plan. Yeah, that so it that makes that's things that's difficult that's as far as putting burden, or does that put burden on people that have to in? That's unencumbered in those areas, I suppose, is also the question. So the the land use planning area is sort of a sec separate section of the plan, um, and it's pretty simplified. Um, so our our thought is that for the natural resource section, we would basically go into slightly more detail and say these are some important areas. For the actual land use planning area, which overlays almost exactly, you'll see that there's some difference, especially uh, up in this corner uh, with the forest box of that the state has identified. Um, but for the most part, the southern section matches up pretty well with the state's forest box. Um, and there are some restrictions that go along with that. So uh, on the back, I put in a description of all of the land use areas. And the biggest thing is that residential development presently permitted only with the density of one unit per 25 acres or higher if it's part of a planned development. Um, and that it's not a preservation area and off limits, but it's called the rural conservation planning area. So there are some restrictions that go along with land located in those areas. Um, that's existing. Yeah, and so that's existing. So it, it, you sort of think of these maps as there's two different things. The yeah. looking at the forest, like when, when we're talking about the forest block, and what is there, what communities are there, and how they're managed. It's kind of like the existing conditions piece of it. It's just objective, and we're not making any decisions about what to do about it. It's just what's happening. Yeah, well, I guess my question is why are we why are we calling out one piece of property that's the Green Mountain National Forest within that versus the whole thing? Versus well, that's then the land use map. So then the land use map is. But you know the bears don't stop at the borders. Of no, no. Yeah. No, I know. <laughs> I'm just saying the land use map is then our town's policy map of how you know we're making decisions about. Yeah. The land use is more simplified and, and basically it says exactly that. Bears don't stop. We should aim for so density I, in the yeah. whole area. Whereas the natural resource section is like, let's go into a little more detail about what these areas actually are and what's there. Okay. So the in the the end result is to develop, you know, to enhance what we already have as a land use map that has, you know, our consideration of these blocks and the connections and how we are going to modify our land use map. So uh, maybe the flip side of that would be within that block you would have maybe two, three, four, or five subsets of descriptions of. Um, in the uses with it, not uses, but probably not in the land use section, <clears throat> just because no, that, not in the land use section. But yeah, within this in the resource natural resources. Yeah, it's, yeah, potentially two or three sort of descriptions because it is fairly different from landowner objectives and sort of the escarpment versus the top of the mountain um, in terms of some of the natural communities and things. But again, that could be that could be simplified, especially if we don't have a whole lot of information on this. So. Okay. But just in terms of sort of describing the resources that are up there. I, I think yeah. it's important to remember, at least to note, that almost all of the forest land in Vermont is either 
in the National Forest Land, <coughs> or it's in the Youth Value Program. Mm -hmm. And the Youth Value uh, Program has fairly uh, strict guidelines as to how the land's to be managed. Right. Uh, if it's going to stay in the program, sound long-term forestry management is what it requires, and it's reviewed periodically by the county forester to make sure those those uh, guidelines and principles are being followed. The second uh, key point I'd want to make is that uh, from the very beginning, our plan, our town plan has has taken a more conservation-oriented, a more restrictive role on the conservation lands. 25-acre zoning is very restrictive. Many towns, even mountain towns, have 10-acre zoning as their highest. Some even have uh, one acre. I don't know if Lincoln has changed theirs, but they used to be mm -hmm. one acre for decades and decades, but 10 acres not uncommon at all, and we're 25. So what that means is it's, it's uh, very difficult under current rules to have much of a restrictive uh, effect on the migration patterns, movement patterns of, of wildlife. And so what, what I would think would be reasonable uh, as a general t type of approach is to have some uh, a person give some thought to how they might uh, design the development they do of their land if they do any at all mm -hmm. but uh, design in a way as we've discussed in the past and done in the past to concentrate the development and leave the rest of it as much as possible Open. But uh, we should also be mindful that if we take a, a um, overly restrictive role on farmland or forest land, any, any kind of property, uh, in the long term we discourage people from owning it and investing in it and improving it because they have less predictability as to how it will be regulated. I thought I'd give you that perspective. And, um, 25 acres was what was the minimum size to get in the land use program in Bristol? Or, no. Uh, there, those are two different yeah, no. questions, but you happen to be right, that's the statewide minimum. Okay. Uh, but it includes everything within a contiguous parcel. Uh -huh. 25 acres is the minimum. But what I was referencing was the 25 acre minimum lot size in the Bristol. Oh, okay. in the, and that's very, very large by comparison with any other town in Vermont. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I guess we need to probably update some of the sections about population growth and housing and sort of look at but How much has actually been happening in the last yeah. 10 years? To, mm -hmm. um, but we could certainly look at, and maybe for our next conversation, you know, what the minimums are for the surrounding towns. So it's, I guess my understanding is that it's one unit per 25 acres, but potentially with planned developments, you could do more to cluster. Is that? Well, well you definitely set? You it does go one to 25. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's just. So it's got to have a 25 acre. Right. Yeah, for this pressure. conservation green area. Yeah, anywhere in there. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So can we look at our, yeah, the rural conservation? The green, yeah. yeah. And has there been any chewing or discussions or lamenting about that size of a lot? Well, naturally there is from time to time. <laughs> <laughs> the people who are subject to those restrictions sometimes think about that. But it was a... It was a compromise, and, and a reasonable compromise. I just don't want us to lose sight of the fact that it was a major compromise and have us think, well, now we need to chew away some more. Well, um, I, yeah. Um, no, I, I think you know, when we were, we were looking at this, and 
and I kept saying, well, we, we don't have to do anything. We've already got it because it's, we have pretty well-defined areas and that are already worked out into our land use. And um, as you were saying earlier, we have, you know, the towns really vary. Now, if you compared it to one of the towns out by the lake where there, it's, there really are no big blocks of conservation, it, it, it seems very important to try to maintain some sort of corridors in those towns. We have a lot of them that are already conserved, as you said, in, in multiple ways. Um, so I think we've got a pretty good start on things here. Yeah. And I don't think that the purpose is to make things more restrictive. I, I, that's not my, I think it's really acknowledging and the connections is really the, the most important. And say, say if you're going to develop on the edge of one of, say if you were to do a PUD or, you know, on a big, to, to leave an open space where you could get, you know, instead of doing a whole bunch of 25 acre developments you did more clustered and kept an open space um, so that wildlife could move through. Yeah. And there are some, we could potentially bring in some fragmentation numbers and sort of see how things are going. Because I know, obviously, if you're chipping away those 25 acres at a time, you lose access for potential subculture activities and things. So it's not just the direct effect on that property. So. Yeah, we uh, could certainly bring in some of that language and do some research before next time to sort of say here's where we are and how it stands. I think we'll find that uh, most of the development has been on, on the edge mm -hmm. and on smaller lots to begin with. Mm -hmm. as, you, as you know, um, the development cost of the 25 acre lot is extremely high, bringing in power. Mm -hmm. And road doesn't doesn't make economic sense either. This is one of those cases where the environmental and economic perspectives coincide, mm -hmm. thankfully. Uh, but I think when you do your research, you'll find very few 25-acre lots. You might find a couple, mm -hmm. but not many over the course of 25 years. Yep. Getting to be more like 40 years now. <laughs> One comment on overlays. Sure. On something like this, we just had the roads. You know, you can tell about where they are, but you know. Oh, that direction. That one, that one come down through the edge of it, or does it come down on the side of it, or, or something mm -hmm. like that? Yeah, and that's and that it's on nice. it's some of, on some of these other things, so that's probably not a big deal. It's just easier. Yeah, so I, that's my fault. I threw these maps together just to give yeah. a visual. This is the one that's actually in the town plan, um, yeah. which okay, good. is a little more faded, but does have some of the road areas. But you can see the same uh, rural conservation area and downtown district. This also has some additional sand and gravel resource things. So, is that uh, the land use? Yeah, the this is the existing land. So I just took the basic outlines, which is what you have on your map, just to show that it yeah. lines up with what's existing for the most part, the forest box. And another question here sure. is uh, fragmentation. Is how are we using fragmentation? Yeah, okay. so there's there's sort of two definitions. So one is actual forest change or loss. So taking it from sort of big continuous areas and chipping into it. Uh, the other is actual ownership change, which in some ways is has more ramifications for things like forestry because obviously we're talking about the national forest and some of the zoners and the big areas that have different management concerns and if if the land is going to different owners with different objectives then you know as a forester or a logger you run into problems where you don't have enough acres in one place or you're having to move your trucks and it just becomes totally unfeasible so mm -hmm. even though it's invisible from a satellite you know still looks like forest it may be changing the management um, and you may get you know differences in folks who are visit who are you know living there seasonally versus living there all the time you know there can be a host of things that are different so um, fragmentation in one sense is actual forest change and loss which there hasn't been a whole lot of in the last 20 years um, 
we can actually see from satellites exactly where forests are changing, um, and Vermont's pretty stable. Uh, but the ownership change is, I think, more of a concern in the <coughs> Vermont Natural Resources Council has sort of been aggregating at a town level those numbers of properties getting smaller and smaller, and then properties in the use value program getting smaller and smaller. So we could bring in some of that information as sort of a trend for the town to be thinking about um, as part of this section. Yeah, yeah. trend would be... Got a question from Brian. Just a quick okay. yeah. So the, all the land use maps that are in the appendix of the current town plan are actually outdated. Oh, then I should get them updated. Yeah, um, because they were still the 2011 maps. It, they don't represent the changes we made to the zones and or creating the three planning areas. Okay. So those are in the zoning? Those are in your in appendix E is the one I'm looking at right now that's part of the town plan is that is outdated. Okay. So, which I think is when you have in your hand there. Yeah. So it doesn't show like the My question was where are the up to date ones? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well that good that's question. Not I have I, I have some. We have them. They exist, uh, right? Somewhat mm -hmm. updated, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have them. Yeah, I have copies of them. Okay. Because I was looking for them. <laughs> do you, Chris, do you have a sense whether that's different than the one I've got printed out in terms of areas? I'm trying to eyeball it to see whether mine are the same as. I'll steal your trouble. Yeah, this is closer to what we've got. Okay, oh, yeah. sorry. Okay. Yeah, because we changed. The There's mostly. Yeah, because that, that one does not reflect the quote downtown. Okay, yeah. so maybe these are fair. This one's fairly, this one's good. This one looks fairly good. Okay. This one, it's it's this area that's all wonky here. Okay. So, so you guys actually have. The more updated version on these sheets. So, but without the roads. <laughs> but without the roads. I'll have the roads so you guys can have them. So, I don't know how we're going on time. Um, do you guys want to take a couple minutes and kind of look through some of these existing goals and give thoughts? I could read them out loud at you if that would help for the cameras, mm -hmm. but I have a sense that, um, so this, if we start on this current Bristol natural resource section goals, policies, recommendations, if you want to take just a couple minutes and look at, sure. let's start with one through four of goals and Basically, oh, here. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah. So basically, the question is: This is what we have now. Do we agree with this? Do we want to? Right. Are there ones that we eliminate? Want to... Do we want to add? Right. Eliminate all. Eliminate all of them. <laughs> <laughs> then we'll have to rewrite all of them. <laughs> my my goal is to not reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. or the, the town plan. So this is what we have now? Okay. Yes, correct. 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 Yes, though it's embedded in that <clears throat> cultural scenic, which is why like the first one refers to scenic and historical resources. Mm. So that that line would actually, that goal would also stay yeah, in the yeah, existing, yeah. pre-existing. Yeah. 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 So what his, uh, under goal one, historical assets, is that appropriate now that the section's been split or? No, I'll take that out. Okay. And I've already crossed it out on Mark's copy, <laughs> but I'm going to take back, if he lets me. Give me that. And what's it? What's your thoughts on Bristol will support viable options for keeping agricultural land open? What's that mean? It's a pretty general statement. I don't know if there are policies or tasks further down, but I think it's sort of a statement of support for maintaining active agriculture in the town. It, and maybe the current use 
program as well? Yeah, because current use does cover agriculture as well. You were, you were probably the only one at this table when those goals were written, aren't you? Probably. Yeah. <laughs> In the time before that. The time before that. Well, Chris was here. Oh, okay. But he's not at the table. So. Oh, okay. Is that a different thing? He's behind you. Yeah. All the way. I mean, on three, I mean, would the implication be that we would not like to see somebody sell their 600-acre farm and have it uh, have condominium structure? I mean, that's the idea for them, is it not? Well, or that you would... Encourage them to get into the, maybe the tax the tax abatement program right. that we were talking the current use program. Or I, I'm calling it, it is the same thing as what they refer to as yes. current use. Okay. Yeah. So, and help someone to maintain their open land right. by okay. re right. well, reducing their taxes. Yeah. I guess, I guess my, my thought is there's, there's much more economic pressure on, on, on that than there is little Bristol saying we're going to do something or we're going to do something. Yeah, and part of this, again, you know, most of the teeth and where the rubber hits the road is in the zoning, which has been updated, but next time it gets updated, they'll be presumably looking at some of these things, assuming everybody talks to each other and reads what's in the town plan. Um, and so, you know, basically to have some, some impetus to say, you know, um, if, you if we're pushing development sure. somewhere, we sure. don't want to push it into farmland or... I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for... You know the motherhood and apple pie that the statement <laughs> uh -huh. says, but I just don't see any. I, I, any practical I just don't see this. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's just fluff. Yeah. Which one are you referring to? Number, Number three? three. Yeah. And I don't think we want to obviously discourage agriculture land, but what what are? Well, maybe it be no, something like um, land trust, which they um, limit the uh, use of agricultural property or something like that, yeah. possibly. Just so that number two in policies mm -hmm. would be a follow-on. Uh, yeah, there's there's a repeat there, so there's actually two number twos. It should go one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Last I checked, but so be four, then. I think it got formatted. <laughs> so, are you talking? Typically, the goals are pretty broad, and then it sort of um, narrows in on yeah. policies and specifics. And I think it's easier if it's that way. So I was thinking, uh, number four is not only the erosion, but to keep these areas in such a manner that it incurred. It, it, because this, this is a, a lot of the wildlife corridor along this river, mm -hmm. a lot of it, on both sides. So I know on the south side is no development, right? But on the north side of the river, we have that corridor where we would discourage further development, uh, further building, because of the... Uh, we, we had a uh, we had a woman in here that, that described the animals that were actually coming through that mm. corridor. Was it? You know who it was? It was a I can't remember. No, it, was, it was a gentleman. It was, it was, oh. it was uh, Randy Earl Durant, uh, former biology teacher in the high school, lives up right. in the Rockdale area. Right. Was he the same one you were talking about? Before? Yeah. yeah. So, okay. Well, it seems like number four is specifically talking about erosion. But I so, think it should be broadened. Well, I think you could talk about erosion, but right, I think I if you're going to broaden it for um, just pulling, talking about corridors, I think there should be a statement in here about corridors. Yeah, that okay. a whole separate. So okay. then the corridors could apply to, or a statement about corridors between forest blocks. Good. Or, and so can we stick that? Can we stick that in? So be number five or six or whatever number we're on. I don't it. know. What the number? <laughs> But I so I guess we need to come up on a three. I mean, I don't. Yeah, if there's one, so so this is this current one. Um, just so we're again not reinventing things from scratch. On the back is actually a whole list of potential sort of forest and corridor migrate 
commission specific goals, policies, or recommendations that I pulled from either other examples or the state's documents to, as ones that they suggest. So those are ones that potentially we could move over or just add whole cloth, although it starts to get pretty weighty if you take all of them. So I guess what, what I had in mind is some meshing of the two, but without making it totally unwieldy. I mean, this thing could get so detailed that anybody reading it would not have any concept of what they read. You know, I <laughs> well, mean, so I think it has to be anything. pretty... Right. Concise and direct. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know that too many people are reading the town plan for fun at the moment. You guys are sort of forced well, to... Well, I'm sure that's true, but I mean, we've... <laughs> We don't want to money the water see right. further. Right. I mean, the biggest time that the town plan is coming to play here locally is through the Act 250 process. So, criteria 10 of Act 250 asks, does the project conform with your local and regional plans? So, if somebody's proposing a housing development or a manufacturing opportunity, and it doesn't meet your town plan, their Act 250 permit could more than likely, it has a very good chance it would be denied. Right. So that's the caution of, of, of making Putting too many things too out. much into your town plan. Right. It's a plan, it's a right. vision. Right. But it has some ramifications. Yeah. Well, on the back side, I think the, the first goal and the third goal, I mean, so the first goal, maintain and improve. I, mean, I don't know how people feel about improve, but or just maintain ecological integrity of intact forest blocks and maintain perhaps improve the ecological integrity and functionality of habitat connectors. I think we are already we've already mentioned the support working forests, I think. Well, Support working force is similar to Bristol will support viable options for keeping agriculture. Well, no, that's not working for us. So, um, so we could potentially combine do we have? productive do we, agricultural and productive forest. We, didn't, we don't have a goal somehow. then in our plan now that mentions working force, do we? Okay, you can. Uh, it seems like we should have one somewhere. <laughs> I can't imagine we don't. Yeah. <laughs> reference to it. In various places, but maybe not as a goal. There, right. there is a short paragraph in the Maybe existing. it's just natural, protect natural resources. There are, there's a very short paragraph in the existing uh, natural resources section of the plan. It says, uh, Bristol has a wide variety of agricultural and forest lands that help to maintain open, undeveloped space and the rural nature of the town. These areas are important to the community and will continue to be in the future. Therefore, agriculture and forestry should be supported to be viable uses of the land. So we can just make sure that that gets encapsulated in one of the goals or more specific policies and tasks. Other folks have strong feelings about that. I'll, I'll give you, you can both speak now, but you don't have to forever hold your peace. You're welcome to email or bring it to the next meeting. Because um, my, I think our thought was basically we would give you some time to, to look at these. I know folks have other places they would like to be this evening, and uh, but may also not have the time to revisit this. Uh, so if, if you want to keep sort of plowing through and looking at policies and recommendations, we can do that. Or, we can sort of set that as our assignment for discussion amongst. I'd like to be able to digest this a little bit myself. Yeah, and maybe you can tell me what, what kind of timeline that you envision. Uh, we've come down in the nitty gritty, lay all this out, and, and we vote and so on. Mm -hmm. Is that next month or six months from now? Hopefully, wow. between that. Hopefully, not six months. Okay. Um, I think we'd like to revisit it and get it. <clears throat> 
well, it's more firmly in place next time. There's a bunch of pieces, and we're going to have we're not going to be able to change or officially. I mean, we can have our own votes on on policies. I, you know, I guess it's more of a straw, you know, straw poll or an agreement because we're not. So we're passing a recommendation then, essentially, right? Right, and 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 we'll we'll put a draft together for this section of the plan, but then that then we need to go and we, we also need to have to have a public hearing on that. It needs to be approved by the select board and it needs to be warned. So there's a, a process. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I mentioned this at the last meeting that, I mean, we would like to be able to bring all of these changes and this may seem too short for some people to next springs uh, town meeting. Yeah, so, so we'd that, like to have it. Basically, final. Oh, so that's the goal. But it, that that would be my goal. Okay. Yeah. That is kind of a short period of time, and it may not seem it to you now. Well, it is. I mean, if we're meeting monthly, you know. Sure, right. What? <laughs> if we're meeting monthly, that's going to take some. Yeah. Right. So, but I think this method that Andrew, you know, is going to set up with, if people, you know, can, you know, check out, yeah. we can throw ideas yeah, on the Google sure Doc. You know, I don't use yeah. it that much, but it, it, you know, we can or yeah. share yeah. email. Yeah. And then kind of come back and and review things. You need to be careful share an email. What? You need to be careful share. Oh, you're email. right. You're right. We can't do that. But we can. Well, we can email, but you can't email back. That's the thing. We can send you. Like one person can send everybody an email, but we can't communicate back and forth via yeah, email. No, no. So that's against the open uh, meeting laws. Okay. Um, so was this stuff? I, maybe did I miss out? Was this stuff sent out previously? No. No. This okay. is the. This right. was freshly printed. Today. Okay. So, so I certainly asked for that. It gives us a little time to digest it anyway. To so so send yeah. this in a digital, a digital form, would that be helpful? Or yeah, I would. Yeah, I'd like that. Yeah. And and well, typically for different. other things for our meetings, we <laughs> will send. Out, I will send out. Chris will send out. Are we having a hearing next? Um, uh, on the ninth. I think right we're up there with second. The second. 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 Sorry. Okay. So we will send that out to everybody, and typically we don't respond to that email because it, there's right. a policy that, that, that violates the so meeting law. The next piece is July second. You said is July second, and we're we're going to be doing something different. But we certainly can talk about you know if there's questions about this or anything. Kind of thing that Andrew's not going to be here. But what can you say? What if you want to? What this area is this. Uh, I don't actually. It, it's a site plan review for a change of use on a, in a Main Street property. Right. Yeah, yeah we're good. Yeah. So, so we're going to try to, you know, mm -hmm. like, uh, hopefully we can move forward on this. This, meet, this meeting was really to kind of get all of this out. It is a little complicated, and it's really good feedback, I think, to see, you know, what, what is the best kind of map to help you understand. Um, and know where we need to go so that and, and every and so that everyone's kind of getting on the same page um i'm trying to figure it out it, it's it's a little complicated and you know um and it may be that bristol as a town as in, doesn't have to do a whole lot because we do as as bill mentioned we have a lot of areas that are you know that, that are pretty well defined um i looked at a example that of, of one of these plans that was done in waitsfield and it was interesting, so the lines sort of mirrored where the forest blocks were, but then their land use plan actually moved the line back a little bit, so they had a little bit more dense of zoning. Yep. It was a little bit of a different land use, and that was based on all these other factors. So that's kind of, that's kind of our final product, is after looking at this, what do we think as a board is the best sort of land use? Um, to propose for our town based on the, on the natural resources. So, but the first thing we need to do is to basically get this sort of existing conditions piece. Like, what do we have and how do we label it and how do we present that at, in our natural resource section of the plan? So, that's kind of, well, we hope to kind of get that. That's simpler than the land use piece. Paul's got a question. I'm sorry. He really wants to ask. So we have, <laughs> <laughs> on page 39, we start this on, on the uh, town yeah. plan. We start natural resources, and then we go into topography and soils and stuff. Right. Is what we're creating here a brand new section, or is it 
going to be melded in to what is already there. So it would be splitting, so this is part of that giant cultural scenic historical resources chapter, I guess. Yeah, okay. So splitting it into its own chapter that's just natural resources. So but we're then, creating actually a new section. Yeah. yeah. So, it would be a new so natural resources coming out of okay. here. But you'll notice that at the end of it, there's like one paragraph on agriculture and forestry, so it would be beefing that up. Got it. Okay. I understand. Yeah. So I will do that in the Google document. Please let me know if you have trouble accessing it. Um, and for next time, which I guess is about a month-ish, be the second plus two weeks. So the 16th, maybe? So possibly you could actually, you know, if people want to give Andrew feedback, yeah. um, that'd be great. I think you maybe you could put together what you think would be a good list of goals mm -hmm. and you know, that sometimes it's better if we just have, okay, here's what I propose. And we, yeah. if we got that before the meeting. If you had yeah, very that strong, would, that would be great. Yeah, so like then, before. Because we'll never agree on anything. Say, <laughs> I think we will. But, but when it's just, when everything is just open, you know, up for grabs, it's harder to yeah. kind of come down. So, and, and, and make, so if we have what you think would be a good, list of goals, policies, and recommendations, and then if we all had that ahead of time, we could make notes on it and then kind of come to some sort of consensus or yeah, agreement. Um, um, and also take another look at how we would um, actually visually have map, the map and what, what needs to be on this map. and. Um, how it needs to be labeled. Yep. So, well, so, I think sound reasonable. So like you mentioned uh, each of us writing something up on each one of these areas. No. Uh, no, I would be <laughs> lost no. completely. Okay. Thank you. I'll write up the section and you can no. you can well, give me feedback. How about that? If if people no, feel strongly about it. The lingo. Okay. No, well, Bill, Bill can do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we're in trouble with that. <laughs> okay, so wrap it up. You done? Are you done? I'm done. Okay. Unless anyone else has any more questions for Andrew. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. Just supporting the paper industry. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> a renewable reason. Right? Yeah. Okay, so um, let's see. Chris, yes. you have a hearing yeah. lined up. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, yeah, it's the old images building. Uh, there is a change of use from a personal services to the applicant would like to create, uh, in her terms, a general store. Mm -hmm. um, she will have more defined definition mm -hmm. of what that is. But it's basically changing use from personal services to retail. The building is that? Uh, it's, uh, it's images only. The images, oh, the space where images was. Which are this is a similar situation to when we had Sue and, and Mike. Yeah. Yeah, where it is. Yeah. What? Yeah, we were changing, and it's actually an exact flip flop because yeah. theirs went from retail to personal services, and this one's going from personal services to retail. And we're a little on the fence as to if we really need to do so this, we're, we're doing it now because that's what it says in the sign. Yeah, because there are no it. physical changes. It's actually right. just a use change. Right. It's right on Main Street. It's so in the middle of the house. Right, right, right. 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 Yeah. right. Do you have a uh, sensation of the flower shop? Yeah. yeah. And then there was a hair salon right next to yeah. it. That hair salon is no longer there. Right. There's a new owner, and a tenant is looking to rent that to create a, as she's referred to it a number of times, a general store. Because it's a use change. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. so retail, any retail at all in the in its zone requires a site plan review. For our zone. You know, if we called it something different, because there is no site plan really. It's just it's really a use change. It is a game store, and we need to have a discussion. But are they submitting drawings then? There's nothing. There, there's no drawings to submit, and that's the thing is that a lot of the when, you, when I went through the actual site plan criteria, mm -hmm. ninety-five percent of it's NA. Yeah. Not applicable. Um, they're not changing lighting. They're not. I mean, they, there's facade change, but that's going through the downtown review. Um, there's, an, there's, the there's some T1. There's some T111 over the top two windows. 
So if you look at the sensations, it's the same building, and one side sensations and one side was images. Right. The images side had basically boarded over the two upper windows. Um, and they want to take that off and reveal back those two windows. To, in, oh, so. Sensations has gone out too. Oh, I didn't even notice. No, that. no, Sensations is there. Oh, they're still there. Okay. Yeah, but I'm just saying, if you look at the building, it's one building. Right, right. And Sensations went upper windows are there, and images are boarded over. Oh, okay. So they want, we, they want to take that wood off, but in order to do that, it's a facade change, which then triggers the Downtown Review Committee. Right. Uh, hmm. Not another one of those uh, house plan uh, stores, is it? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, she, said, she, she actually said her phone You finally caught on to that, didn't you? Uh, it took me a while. I know, it did. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> Eventually, I figured it out. At least you can out. admit it. At least you're admitting it. <laughs> that, yeah, that, was, that holy Please. thing was entertaining. Yeah. I don't see the... I don't, I don't. He's to be doing very well. <laughs> yeah. I such business with that. <laughs> I don't think. I don't think so. No. Okay. Um, That's all I got. All right. So. I would like a motion to adjourn. You would? Yes. No. Second. Okay. Okay. Um, all in favor of that? Aye. Aye. Okay. I. So July second, we're going to oh. meet again. July 2nd, yeah. we're going to meet again. Okay. We, yeah. I didn't have a I'll send out the, by Friday, I'll send out the information that I have. Okay. okay.